American Air Gunner is sponsored by Pyramid Air. Air guns are not just for kids anymore. Umarex, your premium air gun supplier. And these fine sponsors. Hello and welcome to American Air Gunner. In our first season, I had mentioned that there are some air guns on the market that operate on both high pressure air and on CO2, but we didn't give you the information you need to get started using these air guns. So that's the subject of today's episode. That's right, Paul. All the air guns we'll be shooting today don't need to be powered by expensive air compressors, hand pumps, or scuba tanks. In fact, they can all be powered with the same CO2 tanks you would use with a paintball gun. For instance, the Air Force Condor I've been shooting this morning is legendary for its power and accuracy, but what many people don't know is that it can be easily converted to use CO2. So let's use the Condor in our first comparison test between high pressure air and CO2 by passing some pellets over the crani. Here we have the bottle reservoir that comes with the Air Force Condor. This has been charged up to 2900 PSI. On the other hand, we have our CO2 bottle. This is a 14 ounce paintball bottle. On top, we have the CO2 adapter that screws into the back of the Air Force Condor. Now, CO2 is a temperature dependent gas. It's about 75 degrees out here today, so it's safe to assume there's about 800, 850 PSI inside this tank. For our first test, we'll be using the high pressure air tank with 26.2 grain pellets. Crystal, you ready to do this? I'm ready. Okay, let's go ahead and put this tank on. I'll cock the rifle. Put the tank in the back. Now I'll decock the rifle, take it off safe, hold the hammer, and there we go. The Air Force Condor has a power adjustment wheel, and what this does is increase or decrease the amount of tension on the hammer spring. The hammer hits the valve. If it's on the lowest setting, the valve only releases a small amount of air, but if you put it on the highest setting, it increases the tension, the hammer hits the valve, and it lets more air out for more powerful shots. I'm going to keep it on the medium setting for this test. 1,007. 1,007. One thousand. One thousand. A grand. Nine hundred and ninety-four. All right, Crystal, if you would, calculate the foot-pounds of energy. Meanwhile, I'll go ahead and swap out this high-pressure air tank for the CO2 tank. Okay. So based on our average of 980.24 feet per second, I'm going to calculate the foot-pounds of energy. I'm first going to multiply 980.24 by itself, multiplied by the pellet weight, which is 26.2, divided by the constant, which is 450240 equals 55.9 foot-pounds of energy. 55 foot-pounds, all right. While I have the CO2 tank on here, we're not gonna get nearly 55 foot-pounds of energy. Let's see what we do get, though. Wanna reset that crony for me, Crystal? Sure. Thank you. All right. Buddy's safe, glasses on. Downrange is safe. Six twenty one. If you're wondering what I have on this CO2 bottle here, this is just one of the foam covers that comes on a reusable water bottle. Got it at a general store for a couple of dollars. All it does is keep the cold metal from touching my face. 612. All right. Well, let's do the same thing again and find out what we have. Okay. According to my calculations, the Air Force Condor with a CO2 tank shot at 22 foot-pounds of energy. 
Now I think that's enough energy for hunting small game and eliminating pests, but the most curious number we got in our test was the extreme spread. 16. 16 feet per second extreme spread on a power source that is temperature dependent. That's a pretty good number there. Now we have to cut for a break here, but when we come back, we're going to take a closer look at the Benjamin Discovery, another air gun that operates on both high pressure air and CO2. We'll see you folks after the break. Today I'm shooting with the Benjamin Discovery. It's a 22 caliber pre-charged pneumatic air rifle. This particular Discovery has a customized walnut stock courtesy of James Linthicum. Before I do any more shooting, I want to show you how to properly degas and charge your rifle with a CO2 tank. The first step is to degas with your degassing tool. When you're degassing your rifle, just turn slowly and you should be able to hear the air coming out and you'll know when the gas is completely gone. Okay, it sounds like all the gas is out. I'm gonna set my degasser tool aside and turn the rifle so we can both see the gauge when I'm filling it. Next, I'm gonna to come to the front of the rifle and pull the fill tube cap off. Next, I'm gonna take the quick connect on my CO2 tank and attach it to the fill probe. Make sure that's on nice and tight. And I'm going to turn the CO2 tank upside down while watching the gauge, I'm gonna turn the knob slowly to the right. I'll be able to hear the gas. Okay, so that's full. I'm gonna turn this off. And before pulling the quick connect off the fill probe, I'm going to bleed the line. Take the tank right off and pull the probe. Set that aside because I'm done with it. Put my cap back on and I'm ready to do some crony testing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot my string of 10 with the Benjamin Discovery powered by CO2. Okay, so I'm gonna take the average 663.43 and multiply it by itself, multiplied by the pellet weight, which is 14.3, divided by the constant, which is 450240, which gives us 13.9 foot-pounds of energy. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and test the Benjamin Discovery with high-pressured air. Okay, so I charged the Discovery up to 2900 PSI. I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot another string of 10. Okay, so according to my results, with high pressured air, the Benjamin Discovery shot 14.3 grain pellets at an average of 806 feet per second, which gives us 20.6 foot-pounds of energy. Now, with CO2, it only shot 13.9, but that's still plenty of power for pest control or target shooting. Next, let's check out some more accuracy testing with high pressured air and CO2. The American-made Air Force Condor is a powerful and accurate hunting tool thanks to its match-grade Lothar Walter barrel and the high degree of engineering know-how and good old pride that goes into the manufacturing process. But just how does it perform using CO2 as a power plant? Let me swap out this high-pressure air bottle for a CO2 tank and we'll find out.
All right, I have the CO2 bottle mounted on the Air Force Condor. I'll be using the same 21 grain Barracuda match pellets as I did with the high pressure air tank. It's going to be shooting a lot slower, a little bit over 600 feet per second, so I'll have to go ahead and adjust the elevation on my Hawk Eclipse scope. We'll take some sight in shots. Looks like I'll have to raise the elevation up quite a few clicks here. I'll go 10 clicks. We're at about 40 yards here to our paper target. That should bring us pretty close. Well, it looks like we're sighted in. Let me put up some critter targets and take a few shots. Well, it's apparent by our downrange target that CO2 is an excellent alternative power source for the Air Force Condor. Ten clicks. Paul Cray has been helping us set up our TX200 for field target shooting and last week he helped me mark the scope for range finding, which is not only important for field target shooters, but also great information for any hunters or anyone shooting a scoped rifle. Let's take a look at that footage. So I'm up in the field with Paul Cray. He's been helping us set up our TX200 for field target shooting. Paul, the last time you were with us, you showed how to calibrate the pellet's flight path with our Hawk Sidewinder scope, but where do we go from here? Yeah, Crystal, probably the most unique aspect of field target is we shoot at different distances, all the way from 10 to 55 yards, and we don't actually know the ranges to those targets. So we use our scope as a range finding tool. So today we're going to explain how to set up the scope for that purpose. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. So Paul, what's the first step here? Well, Crystal, because uh, the nearest target we're going to encounter is going to be 10 yards away, mm -hmm. we have a target placed at 10 yards. So what you're going to do is going to find the target through the scope okay. and focus this focus ring until that target is perfectly in focus. When we have that, we're going to mark 10 on our uh, focus wheel right here. Okay. Should I okay, go ahead? Yeah, right. give it a shot. So it's a good idea to, uh, if you have an adjustable scope, to back off the mag so you can actually get a wilder field of view. Right. You got it. And it should always uh, range find on the scope's maximum magnification. It's just more accurate that way. Yeah, and it's a good idea to go back and forth so you know you get fine you fine tune it. Yeah. Alright, I think I'm good. Good. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna mark it right here so we know that's ten yards. Okay. Right on the tape? Yep. So now we have a target placed at 11 yards, so you're going to repeat the whole process, find the target through the scope, focus, and we'll mark that at, at 11. I mean, it's a long process, this, you know, it can take, we, we do 11, 10, 11, 12, all individually, all out to 20 yards, mm -hmm. so it, it can take some time. And if I'm 20 yards, you have 55, I actually do in 5 yards intervals. Okay. So yeah, just mark that at 11. So we're going to continue that in one yard increments all the way out to 20 yards. And then, like I said, you can go from 20 to 25, from 25, 30, 35, all the way out to 55. Okay. Well, Paul, if you'd be kind enough to help with the targets, I'll just mark the ring. Absolutely. Let's go. Okay. Are you going to say when or? When. When. Stop. Uh, move in a little. There's good. Uh, move in a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. When? Last one. Great. Stop 55. 
Yep. Great job, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tiger. Nicely done, Crystal. Thanks, you too. Okay, now that we have our scope set up for field target, we have uh, we just finished uh, marking the ranges off for range finding, and you've done your homework here on your trajectory card. Pretty impressive. Thanks. So we're going to try and combine both and uh, try and hit some targets. Do you want to try before the rain comes let's, really hard? Let's give it a shot. <laughs> okay. So Crystal, now you're, sit you're sitting down, you're in the position, you find the target through the scope, and range find. Again, just gently and slowly turn turning the wheel until uh, okay. the target's right in focus. And it's on now, 18. What, 18, well look at your range card again. And it shows you at two. Two plus two? Yeah, the number two plus two clicks. So two and two additional clicks. Excellent. And I'm good? You're good to go. Get yourself on target okay. and disengage the safety. Good shot. Thanks. Do you want to load and then range find or range find and load? Because some people prefer one over the other. I like loading first. Okay. That way I'm ready to go once I've sighted everything in and Good I call. don't have to go That's back That's my on preference it. too. Yeah. All right. There you go. Good. I'm sighted in for the crow again, so. Good shooting. Thanks. <laughs> Do you want to go for the fire target? Yeah, let's go for the rabbit. Let's go. You got it? Yep. Focus the uh, side wheel till the target is nice and clear, perfectly in focus. All right. And what's it read? 35. 35. So we, again, we look at our card and we see 35 is zero. Okay. So now should I go? Um, yeah, come back to zero this way. This from, way? From where you started. Yeah, we're going to turn. Right there. Okay. So we're always going to move just one direction. Okay. Okay. And back to where we started. All right, I think okay. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> nope. It's out there. It wasn't in the kill zone. Let's try again. Is, is this the first time you've actually shot this rifle? Yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. I mean, that's... It's, it's not easy. Just getting used to a rifle can be difficult, yeah. you know? What I try and focus on is like a a mark right in the dead center of the kill zone and just kind of glue the crosshairs to that. Just gently squeeze back the trigger. Excellent. Looks Thanks. like you did a great job setting up your scope. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do some shooting. All right. Okay. So how was your uh, 4th of July? It was nice. Yeah? I, yeah, I got to catch up with friends and barbecue and swim. Cool. Yeah, how was yours? Good. I went to the carnival in Margaretville. Ooh. It was kind of cool, you know, eat bad food, go on rides. <laughs> I have an experiment I think I want to do with the 25 caliber Benjamin Marauder. I have a ballistic test. Okay. And I think the crew has a really neat idea for the outro of today's episode, and they could probably use a hand. Okay. So if you go help them, I'll do this test and I'll catch you later. Sounds good. All right. Have fun. Okay, I have the glycerin soap bar that we use here on the show for ballistic penetration tests. This is just three bars of glycerin soap melted down in the microwave oven, allowed to cool. I'll be using the 25 caliber Benjamin Marauder for the penetration test using H&N hollow point pellets. We should see very good expansion while this is on high pressure air. When we swap it out for CO2, who knows what's going to happen. Let me clamp down this soap bar and we'll get started. Now this stuff is great. Once you're done doing your ballistic test, just cut it up, get your pellets out, put it in the microwave for about 90 seconds, let it cool in the fridge or just at room temperature overnight, and you have a brand new block of ballistic gel. One of the greatest things about the Benjamin Marauder, other than it's made right here in New York State, is that it's extremely quiet. The shroud mechanism on the barrel works very well, and that's great for backyard shooting. Okay, we've adjusted the Benjamin Marauder for using CO2, and that was a matter of taking the stock off and adjusting a metering screw. It's a little bit too much to get into for this episode, but we'll definitely have it on another show. Meanwhile, I have the same H&N hollow point pellets, our glycerin soap down range. I'm gonna try to put one right above our last pellet.
Well, here's our H&N hollow point pellet shot into our bar of soap using high pressure air. And the one above it is the one using CO2. I'd say it's about an inch and a half difference, or inch and a quarter difference between the depth of those two pellets. But what's most dramatic is if we turn it around. Look at the difference in those entry holes. The one using high pressure air seems devastating. The one above it with CO2 is much, much smaller. So what do you think of this contraption? <laughs> I don't know, Dylan. That looks kind of Rube Goldberg to me. It's gonna hit. Ooh, that's a, that'll be a bullseye, won't it? <laughs> what do you think, Crystal? I think it's gonna work. You think it's gonna work? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's wrap up the show. Okay. Well, we've really enjoyed showing you these fine air guns that operate on both high pressure air and CO2, and they just might be an alternative for you to costly high pressure air equipment. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of American Air Gunner. And until next time, shoot safe and have fun. And oh, you ready, Crystal? I'm ready. Also, <laughs> don't try this at home, and God bless America. Watch it!